1997. I think it was probably one of the best years I had because of the numbers of whales that we saw. They were super close to Gloucester that year. And they just did so many different behaviors that whole summer. So I have a couple of stories for you before I get started with my who we saw that year. So first of them was the end of May, we were coming back from the trip and we had left most of the whales behind us. And we saw these two whales breach off the right hand side of the boat, like half a mile away. We went over there and it was Clipper and her calf. And you may remember that the end of 96, Clipper was one of the last whales I saw that year and she was enormous. And I was convinced she was gonna come back with a calf. And then that day in 97, I think I was the first person to see her with a calf that year to know that she was a new mom that year. And so it was just a super cool, super cool sighting to get to see her and her new calf. And then the other mother calf pair story I have from that year, I remember was Firefly had a calf and the calf had this really distinct black or white line on its dorsal fin. So we were, we were kind of a mile away from the bulk of where the whales were. And we had her calf and there was no mom. Firefly was nowhere near us. Um, a whale started breaching about a mile away and the calf just started swimming right towards that breaching whale. When we got there, it was Firefly that had been breaching. She stopped once the calf got there. And I always wonder about whether she was kind of like, oh, honey, if you're lost, here I am. Or if she was like, get over here right now. We'll never know what the moms are saying to their babies. Okay. so. The summer of 97, we had, I remember this couple week period where the whales, it was flat calm and we were pretty close to Gloucester. I mean, like 10 miles out and the whales would be feeding all morning. Um, and I mean, we would see lunge feeding, we had bubble nets, we had bubble clouds. Um, this is a close up of the jawline where the, the jaw is all scarred up because they're scuffing along the bottom. There was this awesome whale that summer named Bandit. He was around quite a, a couple different summers, but he had the coolest feeding strategy. He'd blow this really big half circle of thin little bubbles. And then he would come up and slash his tail sideways three to five times. And then he'd blow some more bubbles and come up and lunge sideways. Totally unique. From a mile away, you knew that it was Bandit that was up there feeding. Coolest tail too. He's actually named for the pattern on the top side of the tail because he's got those two marks that look like a bandit's tail. So that's actually the top of the tail. The underside is is not really um, distinctive, but he's certainly a whale that you can tell from from far away. Um, so the mornings the whales would be feeding, and then we'd come out in the afternoons, and the whales would kind of be spread out, and they would either play with the boat or they were active. I mean, it was it was literally amazing. We had um, lots of different breaches. I love this one where the flippers are up in the air. It's like, oh, I'm just chilling out. This is ember breaching. This is Grinch. So I have to say Grinch was one of the first whales I named. And so we named them after the patterns on the underside of their tails. And it's got this little mark that looks like a mountain and then the sled and then a little blob that kind of looked like the Grinch. So it looked like the Grinch on the top of the mountain before he slides into Whoville. This is an awesome picture of Molson in front of the twin lights. You can see that in the background. And then close to boat, that's what we call it when the whales play with the boat. This is Treasure who was spy hopping. You can see all the barnacles on its chin. And this is Sickle's calf from that, from that year. Um, this, you can see a couple different whales hanging at the surface and one bringing its head up. I remember lots of different whales. They were just kind of milling at the surface. Um, couple spy hops. These are two. You can see one has all white under the chin. The other one's all all black. And then this is Colt. Colt was, is famous for playing with a boat. And one trip, I remember he was near like where the pilot house is and he rolled over on his side and swam up the entire length of the bow on his side, eyed wide open. It was like he was looking at every single passenger on the boat. It was so incredible. You could feel the electricity on the, you know, coming from the passengers that day. It was literally, it gives me chills still to this day just what a visceral reaction everybody had to that experience. So some of the individual whales we saw, it's kind of a collection of whales that we still see today and the names that I hadn't really thought of in a long time. So I hope you enjoy. So Compass is one. Compass has this really unique um, scar on the right hand shoulder. I thought, it, I think it was a cookie cutter shark, but maybe it's, maybe it's not. Dome is another whale we saw that summer quite a bit. She, uh, I didn't have a single picture of the mark that looks like a dome on her right hand fluke, but this is this is dome. And then Echo is another whale we saw a bit that year. Garland, so Garland, when he went down for a dive, he would wiggle his tail like this and then dive, it was funny. 
Perens, I hadn't thought about that whale in a long time. Uh, an old favorite is Salt, Sparta. So she became one of my favorites. She was born in 96 to Olympia and she became one of my favorite whales. She was around so much though during those years in the late nineties. And then this is a sibling of hers. This is actually Tribble, who's a whale I had forgotten about um, in front of the new boat in front of the Miss Cape Ann. So Captain Bill's got that boat in, in 97. Trident, she's an old favorite. This picture is Tulip and Icarus. So Tulip is the one that's closest to us. And in the white hand, the white mark on the right hand side of her fluke, it almost looks like a tulip mark. It's kind of faint, but it's you can see the, the top of it. And then Icarus is the other one. And if you look really carefully, you can kind of see the Icarus's tail is curled in a little bit. And if you look at the base of the tail right here, there's a, an indentation. So he was entangled in fishing gear and its tail kind of curled in. That's happened to a few whales. Um, and so he was named after Icarus. He flew too close to the sun. A um, couple others, we had apostrophe and owl. So owl we've been seeing for many years. She's had that big gash in her back. She was hit by a boat at some point, but is surviving and thriving, having calves. Dyad, Dyad was out a lot in 2020. Exclaim, so this is exclaim without the big scar, or big chunk taken out of the underside of his fluke, Nile. Um, this is probably one of my favorite pictures I have of her just because her tail is so high out of the water. Venom, who was born in 1996. So this is Venom before she lost part of her tail. And Tear, Tear just has this really unique tail because of the way it kind of curls in. Um, so he's kind of another easy whale to recognize from a distance just because of the shape of its tail. This is a whale named Vague who I did not recollect at all. And this is her calf um, who was breaching. And then this last one is Zenith, um, who was Pepper's calf in 1996. And a handful of times over the years, a calf has stayed with its mom for more than one year. So in 97, Zenith came back and was still by Pepper's side and they hung out most of that summer. Um, had a great group of intern on the, interns on the boat that year. I was just, as I was going through the data sheets, like everything's so neat and organized and I can read everything, the handwriting. It was all awesome and just a fun, fun, fun group of people. So, so during that time in the late 90s, there were a lot of whale watch boats. On a Saturday afternoon when the companies had overflow boats going out, there were seven boats out of Gloucester, one out of Rockport, one out of Salem. And there were a lot of boats out there at that time. Um, and so luckily there were a lot of whales. So we were often spread out. But, you know, occasionally we'd see everyone see other boats and give them the, the naturalist wave across the water as we saw our friends. And just a couple of the other species that we saw, basking sharks. Saw a lot of basking sharks in the late the late 90s. The Atlantic white-sided dolphins is just one of my favorite pictures that I've taken over the years. This, this picture is of a fin whale that's on its side. So it, I think it's probably just getting ready to lunge, possibly, or it's just lunged and fed at the surface and that's just its tail kind of coming up after it lunge. lunge. This is my crew on August 9th. That was quite a big year, put on the most, uh, probably the craziest trip I ever had. Definitely an unforgettable trip that day. So that was 1997. If you went out that year, I hope it gives you, kind of jogs your memory a little bit about some of the whales that we saw that year. Um, a big difference between 1997 and 1998. So you have to stay tuned and see how it changed next year. Thanks.